Uh, of course, we talk about the microbial side and we talk about this inexpensive concept of brewing your own living fertilizers. And it really is becoming pretty much the shape of the future, this idea of on-farm multiplication of key organisms. It can be broad spectrum organisms that just bring more diversity. And we're talking, of course, about things like vermicompost extracts, which are a wonderful source of boosting all important diversity. And then we talk about specialist organisms, mm. organisms like trichoderma and bacillus subtilis and, right. and things like azotobacter, yeah. these wonderful free living nitrogen fixes that also solubilize phosphorus and protect from disease. All of these things can be multiplied. You can use these simple, this is our three in one brewer. Uh, you can make anaerobic blends, you can do extracts and you can make aerobic blends with this three in one uh, brewer, but you can make up your own. You can do that same sort of thing um, to get into this concept of creating your own living fertilizers. Now, the simplest of all is the product BAM. this mixture of many, many different beneficial anaerobes. And what we're talking about, you know, in a thousand litre shuttle, just on a larger scale, thousand litre shuttle, second hand one, as long as it hasn't had chemicals in it, you drill a 12 mil hole in the top, you cut a length of hose, a metre length of hose, you put one end in the top, put some silastic to make sure it's sealed, and it's only in this little top inch in the air space in the top of the tank. The other end goes into a bottle of water, a Coke bottle of water filled with water, strapped with a couple of plastic ties three quarters of the way up on the aluminium frame. And your end of your hose goes into the bottom of that bottle of water and the bottle goes gloop, gloop as the organisms multiply. Then you add the BAM and you add the principal food source molasses uh, and then you start the brewing process and you finish brewing when the bottle stops glooping. Now that's easy and that's inoculum which can go with everything every time you ever put anything out on the farm you put the microbes behind the minerals uh, and magnify the effect. And it's really inexpensive to do this. Just and this, If you do nothing else with microbes, anyone can do this. I can teach you on a farm how to do this in 10 minutes. I mean, it takes a little time to fill up the thousand litre shuttle uh, with the water. That's the only thing that takes time. And you've got two years shelf life of BAM just sitting out in the sun in the paddock. It's that stable. Uh, there are, it's become our largest selling uh, microbial in the world and we're in 55 countries because it is so good. Now checking your progress. Um, so you know, we, we're trying to remove the guesswork. We're trying to bring back a little bit more precision into your operation, some pre precision nutrition into your operation. And one of the simplest little tools, of course, you've heard us talk about it many, many times, squeezing a little bit of juice out of the plant uh, with a garlic crusher. And there are various types of them that can take harder to, to uh, leaves that are harder to extract juice. Uh, you put it on the face of the sloping instrument, the sun refracts through the dissolved solids, and you're measuring your skills uh, as a chlorophyll manager, your skills as a grower. The higher the bricks, the degrees of bricks is what it's called, the better you're doing. And it can be quite an eye-opener for many people to find out they're not doing quite as well as what they thought. So measuring bricks, wonderful tool that also serves as a calcium meter, because when you're looking through this meter, um, you want, don't want to see a sharp line between the two coloured hemispheres that you're looking at. If there's a sharp distinction between the two halves of the hemispheres, uh, that is a calcium deficiency. You want to see this blur where the two halves merge into each other and you can't really tell whether it's 11 degrees bricks or 12 degrees bricks. That is good calcium levels. And so it's a multi-purpose machine that's measuring how well you're doing as a grower, basically. It's a very handy tool. It's measuring nutrient density, essentially. Now, there are a few other little tools and one of them, one of my favourites, um, refers to potassium, the money mineral. Uh, and the simple little test for that is that you take the first fully developed leaf, the leaf that we always check when we check doing leaf tests or whatever, three or four leaves down from the top, squeeze a little bit of juice, and then you take a leaf from the bottom of the plant and they need to be the same. Potassium is the most mobile mineral that'll rush from the lower leaves and you don't measure it till, it, till, till you've drained the entire plant and finally measure it at the fourth leaf down and you've been out of potassium for three, four, five weeks and you can never catch up, you lost yield. So having control of the money mineral by monitoring top leaf, bottom leaf can be invaluable. Now you might not be able to afford the three or $400 that are involved in these little waterproof meters, but there is a little hack that I'll share and it's quite, it's quite popular. 
Um, basically, we're going to take and we're going to get Carl involved here, and Carl's going to bring in some of the some of the kale that we grew with the last uh, little demonstration we did on veggie gardening. Um, and what we're going to do is you're just, just going to buy this little set of we sell them, but you can buy them from pool shops. But ours are a little bit more finely graduated. Uh, so it's a little booklet of test strips, and it's got this little colour chart that comes with it. And what we're trying to do is we're going to take a little little strip. We're going to squeeze a little bit of juice, just two drops on one end, just put on one end of it. And we can see the colour that we've got there. And we haven't done this. What we needed to do was top leaf, bottom leaf. But then we take um, a leaf from the bottom. This, we'll say this was from the top. We take a leaf from the bottom and we squeeze the leaf from the bottom on the bottom half. Uh, and of course, we haven't done that, so we probably won't have any difference, but we'll, we'll guess that and we'll, we'll just try that and just see if there's a difference. So he's going to squeeze now the second plant. He thinks it is from the bottom. Um, and what we're doing basically is we want to see, according to this chart, we want to see the same colour. And if one end is darker than the other, that's an indication that the alkalizing mineral has moved from those lower leaves and the leaf is more acidic. And if the leaf's more acidic, it becomes a cooling card for insect and also becomes likely that you are, you are potassium deficient. So we're going to do it on the other end of this. Okay, so we've got the two colours and they are, they are pretty much identical. So, I mean, we don't know for sure, to be honest with this, because we don't know where we took them from. But that's the model. You know what you're doing. Um, and you can see it's a fairly healthy kale plant. We did a good job with that. Um, but that's the strip, pH strip, drop on each end. They need to be the same shade. And if one end's darker than the other end, uh, you've, you've got a, a more acidic lower leaf. And most commonly, that relates to a lack of the alkalizing mineral. It means your potassium deficiency needs to be addressed. So it's just a cheap hack that can get you away from having to buy a meter. It's not as reliable, but it's reasonably good. So you can monitor your nitrogen, you can monitor your potassium, you can monitor your sap pH by measuring. Um, you don't want your sap pH from that first fully developed leaf to drop below 6.4, and that reflects a lack of an alkalizing mineral. So it's another tool that we can use as a guideline. And of course, we could use the, the pH strip for that same purpose. Now. That's monitoring. Um, and then there's the concept that we sort of touched upon, um, the concept of playing around with plant growth promoters. We talked about tricontinal. We obviously have to talk about kelp as well. Uh, powerful tool. Ba most of its mode of action is based upon um, this really high levels of four growth hormones that really can give you a powerhouse response for tiny amounts. One gram per litre of our tri-kelp, for example, is sufficient to give you a really marked response in some instances. Um, this is quite difficult for people because you've been built in a world of fear, really. I mean, it's the conventional extractive model is based on an agronomist coming into your paddock and he's been told that that's the way to do it. And he walks the paddock and he finds an insect or he finds a sign of a disease and he brings that leaf to you and says, gee, you're in trouble, mate, and I've just got the chemical you need in the back. And so your whole model is, draw, is based upon the concept of fear. And I've mentioned the work, perhaps I haven't, but this very, very famous book of the journalist down on his luck, uh, sitting at a park bench. He's lost his, his wife, he's lost his house, he's lost his, his job. And he's saying, why me? And the pen and paper sitting on the debt and the pen begins writing or so the story goes. And the journalist, Neil Donald Walsh, amongst many insights that theoretically came from God, whether or not you believe that, there are some tremendously profound things in that book, first book called Conversations with God. Um, and, you know, it may have been his own insight, whatever it was, it's some good stuff. And one of the things is that God makes the statement, every decision you ever make in this short life will be based upon one of two things, and there are zero exceptions. And I want you to think about every decision you've ever made or are about to make. The decision will be based on fear or it'll be based on love. And that dichotomy is perfect for what we're talking about regenerative versus the conventional extractive model, because one of them is fear-based and this is love-based. And we're talking about love for ourselves, love for our soil, love for our consumers, love for our children, love for people who inherit our farm. It's a whole different model than pouring on chemicals. It really is a different thing and you feel different about yourself uh, and the world around you. So, uh, so, so on that context, part of that story is this proactive protection rather than waiting until the fear hits and then you do it. If I don't do this, this will happen. 
Um, and, and, and part of that is just recognizing that the that if something works, we'll get in early before the disease gets there. And, you know, a fine example of that is, you know, for example, we've done some work with powdery mildew and we found this tremendous control mechanism is to take BAM, which you can brew yourself, we mentioned, and milk powder at one kilo per 300 litres. I would use two kilos per hectare in vegetable crops. We use five kilos with 1,500 litres uh, in the apple orchard for controlling powdery mildew. Now you might want to put a little touch of manganese with that because it's often linked to a manganese deficiency, but without it, it works incredibly well. But if you know that works, and then when you know there's going to be pressure from powder before it comes, you can just put your milk powder, which also delivers calcium very efficiently, uh, milk powder and bam, you can brew it up. So it's really inexpensive. The milk powder is about $6 a kilo. Um, and that two kilos per hectare, or in an orchard scenario, as much as five kilos per hectare works a treat. And that's a proactive approach. It's much easier to take control when there's just a few spores than to wait until the entire thing is covered in, in, a, in a sooty mold sort of thing. Uh, so that's the proactive approach, which is part of you know, how you approach this thing. And finally, in our top 10 steps that you might make is this recognition that in a genuinely holistic approach, your health is as important as your animals, your plants and your soil's health and your planet's health. Uh, so, and that's, you know, herein lies the problem because we know that farmer health isn't that good. There's many statistics that's shown that we've got double the levels of de degenerative disease, three times the level of cancer, three times the level of depression, and four times the level of suicide farmers. That's not good. Uh, and so, you know, simple little things. And we teach this in our, in our longer courses. We, in depth, we go into all the sorts of things that you can do um, to avoid that stress and reduce that stress and mitigate that stress that can lead to depression and so forth. There's good reasons to be stressed and drought and, and commodity prices crashing and all the things that happen to us as a farmer. So one of the things, and we talk proactively, is knowing that the thing that you suck when you're stressed, first is magnesium and second is B6. And so you say, okay, well, I've been stressed forever. I'm not sleeping well, whatever. Uh, I'm probably magnesium deficient and 79% of us are. And so the best way to do that is just like foliar brain, you put it through your skin. It's called transdermal magnesium. Now, transdermal magnesium can involve something as simple as an Epsom salts bath, or it could involve our largest selling human health product called Magsorb, which you can simply spray on the soles of your feet with your 2000 pores before you put your socks on and suck up that magnesium via your feet. And that can be a daily practice or certainly a nightly practice, but you would need to have your socks on in bed uh, because it gets a bit sticky when you sprayed it on your feet. Uh, but Epsom salts bath, two cups of Epsom salts in a hot bath for, for 40 minutes. You'll have to do that at night because you will be cruisy uh, and you'll want to sleep. And you say so you don't do that first thing in the morning, but you know, top up, do that for a couple of nights a week for maybe three weeks to bring yourself up to the levels of and notice the difference that you'll feel in terms of stress because you know, the, we've got a flight or fight response uh, that has been there since day one you know, when you walked out of a cave and there was a saber-toothed saber tiger and 32 things changed in your body, all of them driven by magnesium. That hasn't changed. Stress and anxiety are the flight or fight response and we're sucking magnesium constantly. So address it. Address some B6. Take a full B group vitamin with your 100 milligrams of B6 and you've taken t a couple of, getting back to root causes, you've taken care of a couple of things rather than being on that wind, that, 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 that wheel where you're just basically sucking more, you're getting stressed, feeling more stressed, sucking more magnesium B6, getting more stressed until you have a stroke or a heart attack, which are often outcomes of those deficiencies. So address that as part of that story. Um, nurture your life within. Take some probiotics, take some prebiotics. We talked about perhaps yakon and biobubble, but whatever, sauerkraut, you know, we've talked about that previously. Um, vitamin C, vitamin E, the two big antioxidants, the green smoothies, that we've talked about previously, this alkalizing antioxidant phytonutrient pack start to the day. Uh, and probably the most, most beneficial of all tools uh, is called autophagy. And this is this recognition that after 14 hours with no food, this is huge, just Google the benefits of autophagy and realize maybe I should try this. You don't have to do it every day, just try it sometimes. And the concept's quite simply, you've got to go 14 hours without food. And of course the word breakfast means breaking fast. So it happens the best time to do it is overnight. You have your last meal at 6.30. You can eat what you like. You can have your couple of glasses of wine. You can eat what you like for your last meal, but nothing after 6.30, nothing until 10.30 the following morning. Now, autophagy kicks in at 8.30 because it takes 14 hours. And then you've got two hours of autophagy is auto 
eating. It's the, the body eats literally eating dead, worn out cells, even to the point there's a thing called brain autophagy where it cleans up these amyloid plaques that are so closely linked to Alzheimer's. So it's a really, really beneficial strategy. I mean, the list of studies is ridiculous when you get into it. The benefits of autophagy is probably the single most productive thing you'll do to live a much longer life. So just remember that, Google it and get into it. And then the very simple concept of relaxing via breath focus. And there's a very good book called Breath written by, a, it's a really great book, it's a bestseller that talks about the various ways we can use our breath uh, to benefit our health. But he found that the simplest little approach was just five and a half seconds in, we'll do it in this beautiful surrounds now, just a big, 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 empty everything in, Five and a half seconds in and five and a half seconds out. And I use that when I have my sleepless nights and it usually, you know, it probably takes about 10 of them and I'm just in this cruising mode and I fall back asleep again. Uh, it was wonderful, just this little, this new condition that's been discovered relative to mobile phones. Uh, and this talking about this new sort of attention deficit that adults and children are getting from this from their their screen time, uh, and that and the woman who was conducting the interviews is out in the park. She's got a neurologist. He's got an electroencephalograph attached to her head like a helmet with measuring her brain waves, and he gets to do the five and a half seconds in, the five and a half seconds out, and you watch. He's got a screen, and you watch these beautiful alpha waves come in. And then he finds out beforehand what a mobile phone number is and he gets someone to call it. There's just a beep from a text and everything just goes and she can't get back to the alpha. And that's us every minute of every day. That's why it's quite nice to escape that sometimes. Anyway, on that note, I hope you gain something from this, uh, this where to start from concept. Thank you.